Jeremy Veldman, Brian Hancock with the Memphis Astronomical Society. Welcome to another episode of Telescope Tips. Now we've got some questions about binoculars. Again, you're just looking to get started in astronomy and not necessarily looking to purchase a telescope, but just uh, something affordable within your budget to get started. And I tell you, a good set of handheld binoculars is a great tool. Yeah, we, we actually had a, a question on YouTube, what would be a good be, uh, beginning binocular between 80 and $300. And um, unfortunately, Jeremy, I'm gonna dodge that question. And uh, I'm gonna tell you why, I'll, I'll, get, I'll tell you a little um, story that happened to me this week. Um, I have a guy that has been doing um, construction for us for about 10 years, always does a great job. And uh, one of my friends asked me for a reference. They said, hey, you know, do you know someone who could do the floors? I said, definitely this guy, he's been doing work for us for 10 years. You know, he does a great job. Well, he, he went to their house and did him a crap job. So, okay, didn't do a good <laughs> so job. I, I don't give out recommendations anymore. And, um, and the way that relates to binoculars is one binocular that works for me may not necessarily work for you. And why is that? Well, the, um, the first consideration you should have, I think actually the primary consideration is do you wear glasses or not? And if you do wear glasses, do you prefer to view with glasses or uh, is it no problem you can take your glasses off? Because for some people it's not a choice. So if you have to wear glasses or you prefer to wear glasses when you observe, the number one criteria for you, number one criterion for you, is eye relief. And so what is eye relief? Eye relief is how close you have to put the lenses to your eye to get the full field of view. So if you have a binocular with short eye relief, and again, that's gonna be different for every person, what, what you consider short. But for me, short eye relief is 15 millimeters. 15 millimeters is the lowest I can go, and I don't wear glasses, but I do have deep set eyes. So for me, if it's 11 millimeters, it's not working. It's not a comfortable binocular for me. And I actually had that experience with an alpha binocular with a 16 by 70 Fujinon. Wonderful views, but the problem is you have to stab yourself in the eyes to get the full field of view, at least for me. For other people, it's not a problem. And uh, for me, that binocular just was not working. So if you're wearing glasses or you have a facial morphology, unfortunately the same as I do, then you may want to consider a binocular with Larger long eyes. eye relief. So for me, the minimum is 18 millimeters, which is what this is. I have to have an 18 millimeter eye relief for it to be comfortable. Now, what type of binocular is that? Okay, so this is, um, if I were giving recommendations, this would be one I would recommend. It's the Oberwerk 10 by 50 uh, Deluxe. Now, the, what I like about this binocular is it's uh, very rugged, it's waterproof, and um, you know, it, it has a really nice field of view. Now, is the field of view perfect? And what I mean by perfect is our stars pinpoint against 100% of the field of view? No, they're not. Um, I would say out to about 85, 90%. Why is that important? Uh, for some people, it's not a big deal. When you're looking through a binocular, you're looking at what's in the center, right? Usually that's true, but what if you're looking at a conjunction, like what we've got coming with uh, Jupiter and Venus, Venus, right? And let's say they're, you know, four degrees apart. Well, that sounds pretty good because this field of view is 6.4 degrees, so it should be no problem, right? Right. But if that outer edge of that field of view is a little bit blurry, or it looks like a coma, it's not sharp, then when you look at that conjunction, it may not be a really pleasant view because Jupiter and Venus may be right on that borderline where things start getting fuzzy. So just because it says 6.4 degrees field of view, that doesn't necessarily mean that the resolution of that 6.4 degrees is gonna be sharp throughout the entire Right, view. there's gonna be some fall off. And usually, Honestly, uh, when you're talking about something $300 or below, uh, you're going to have to deal with that. 
it's going to be hard to find a binocular um, that is sharp across the entire field of view. And and I would say that's 90% of the time, that's not a problem, right? Yeah, you know, un unless you're looking at uh, conjunctions or, you know, uh, specific things, it's usually not a problem. If you're just looking for a good set of binoculars to get started. Right. That's within reason, a few hundred exactly. bucks. And uh, the, the other thing I would consider for um, another thing I would consider for my first binocular is do I want to use it only for astronomy or do I want to use it for other things like a birding or wildlife viewing? Uh, if that's the case, then I would seriously suggest center focus because some eyepieces are individually focused where you would focus them here like this binocular. And the problem is if it's individual focus, well, that's kind of difficult, right? You look at something and, and you're doing this. For astronomy, you're focused at infinity. Right. So once you, once you do the individual focus, you can pretty much just leave it there. But if I'm looking at a bird at that tree and then the bird flies to the car and I'm trying to change focus doing this, it's not gonna work. So you're gonna wanna get center focus. Another thing to consider is exit pupil. So what is exit pupil? Exit pupil is the size of the light coming out. And with this, uh, 10 by 50, the exit pupil would be five millimeters. Now, if you're um, my age, five millimeters may be the largest that your pupil dilates. So if I get a 10 by 70, you know, my math is really bad, but that's seven millimeters, right? Right. Now, what's the problem with that? If my pupil only dilates, dilates five, millimeters. five millimeters, well, where, where's the rest of that light going? You know, it's being it's, wasted. Yeah, it's just being wasted. So I'm carrying around this heavy binocular and I, I can't utilize it. I unfortunately, at five millimeters, you know, I'm just ra wasting that two millimeters of light. So if you're a young guy and, um, you know, I would actually suggest maybe going to the eye doctor, letting them measure how, you know, how wide your pupil dilates. And uh, maybe you will consider that before you start going to something like a 10 by 70. Uh, 16 by 80 should be okay. That's still, you know, five millimeters. So uh, that's the third consideration. The final consideration is portability. As you can see, this 10 by 50 binocular is still a pretty good size. And um, if you're, you know, flying somewhere to observe, uh, well, this is gonna take up a pretty big chunk of the um, luggage that you're carrying around. Maybe this is even too big. You can go down to an eight by 42. Now, I used this eight by 42. Um, I spent three nights in Death Valley with this uh, 8x42, had wonderful views, and um, and I was pretty satisfied with it. Again, you're flying, right? You fly right. out to Death Valley, you got limited cargo space because you're getting on a plane, and you're but you're gonna be in a dark sky location. Right, exactly. And uh, here, Jeremy, f feel the difference between these two. Wow, yeah, considerable. This yeah. is quite a bit heavier right. than this one. Right. So if you're gonna fly somewhere, this would definitely be a better option. It doesn't have the features or maybe the light gathering capability that this, this set of binoculars would have, but it's adequate for what you're using it for. It right. also doesn't have the eye relief that this one has. Right. When you are considering like a lower magnification binocular though, the reason I don't use these at home, but I do use these when I travel, is the darker your sky, the more useful this is. Using this in um, city or suburban skies, well, it kind of leaves a little bit to be desired because if you have a wider field of view, well, you're also looking at the gray skies of, of the inner city, right? Right. And, it, and so it's not too pleasing uh, for me personally to use low magnification binoculars in the city. Right. Okay, so again, to recap, portability, eye relief, and application are basically the right. three things to consider. So if you're wearing glasses, you need more eye relief, then maybe the overwork would be a better option for you because you can get the 15 to 18 millimeter eye relief. Right. Um, if portability is a factor, you may want to step it down a little bit and go with a Bushnell if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, flying, and you got limited cargo space. 
And then, of course, you got to think about the application. If it's strictly for astronomy, right. where your target is fixed, or if you're going to be using it for some terrestrial applications like hunting or bird watching, where maybe your target is transient, then you may need a set of binoculars that's a little bit more flexible in terms of its focusing capability. So, again, just some options to consider when you're getting started with binocular astronomy and you only want to stay within a couple hundred dollar budget. Right. So that's basically what we're looking at. And I, I uh, do want to point out one really neat thing about these uh, overworks is these are threaded for filters, which is really too cool. So if you're looking at uh, the Orion Nebula, for example, and um, you want to get a little bit extra out of the nebula, maybe see the full extension down, you can thread in some light pollution filters and uh, or if you're trying if you're in a really dark spot you're trying to see the veil nebula maybe um, uh, you know you want to thread in um, an uh, o2 filter so that you can see those so uh, that's really neat these are actually the same binoculars that they sell at bnh photo uh, for the uh, nikon action extreme now you can also consider those it's a lot of time uh, binoculars are the same. They come from a factory in China. Uh, they go to a certain distributor. They, they make a few changes and sell them under their own brand. But I believe these are the same as the Nikon Action Extreme. Uh, now you may consider the Nikon Action Extreme if you still need that extra little bit of eye relief. And I'll tell you why. The Oberworks, you see that they don't have a folding cup. These eyepieces slide in and out like that, just up and down. So actually the lens is a little bit recessed and that's burning about three or four millimeters of eye relief. So to use these with glasses, it may still be a little bit tight. You do lose a little bit of field of view. Actually, I tested these with some reading glasses. I lost a little, not much. Um, but if you feel like you really want that little extra bit of eye relief, maybe the Nikon Action Extremes would be a good choice. Excellent. Thanks, Brian. Sure. You can see you got a lot of different options with binocular astronomy. Guys, I want to remind you again, the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, first Friday of the month, 8 o'clock p.m., Christian Brothers University, CC Hall, room 155. Our website is memphisastro.org. And subscribe to this YouTube channel for more tips on equipment, whether it's binoculars, telescopes, whatever you're looking to do for amateur astronomy. Thanks again, Brian, sure. and uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next episode of Telescope Tips.